Good morning, fellow worshipers. Tuning in to the online worship of the United Methodist Church of Rancho Cordova. How was your week? The promise of Christmas was highlighted this past week as the lessons of Epiphany took hold for each of us. God of abundant gifts, show us where you want us to pour out our gifts in celebration of your life all around us. When we see the darkness and fear, it is too great. Fix our eyes on your light. Help us to walk in the way of the Magi, following the star to the places where you are breaking into our broken world. Amen. We have a chance to follow the light as we get ourselves into our mission people spirit. In nine days, we will be welcoming community members who have a need for food to feed their families during these particularly challenging days. We'll be having our first people's pantry of the new year. We continue to have a loyal and energetic volunteer team to sort, package, and give out food. In addition, your donations of needed food products and monetary uh, gifts makes it possible for us to provide nutritious and wholesome food to our guests. After our December pantry, our inventory is scarce. Next Sunday will be the drop-off zone. And as you shop this week, please consider throwing extra items into your cart for the People's Pantry. We have the usual needs, peanut butter, jelly, cake or brownie mixes, pasta sauce, pasta, cup of noodles, ramen, eggs, sliced pasta, no, sliced bread, not sliced pasta, soup, and canned fruit, one canned meals as well. So anything that you could bring along would be appreciated. The People's Pantry is a place where God is definitely breaking into our broken world. Get your calendars out now. Let's take time to mark some events for the coming week. Remember that if it's a Zoom event, that you'll receive an invitation in the mail giving you information to get on the Zoom call. A reminder, following today's worship, there is a coffee hour and we'd love to have you join us. Just hop right on in and we would enjoy seeing you. Right after the coffee hour is a finance committee meeting and our finance committee will be using the same password and same meeting code to get on for our Zoom meeting and anyone's welcome to join. Mark your calendar tomorrow evening Monday, January the 11th, for our Bible study of the Book of Mark. It continues at 4 o'clock p.m. You can join at any time. This week's affirmations might have been on the minds of the Magi as they left the home of the toddling baby Jesus. God's light shines over all, over the entire world. God's diverse and wondrous light shines with justice and joy. God's light calls me to be open, to shine with God's peace, justice, and compassion for all. Do any of your New Year goals find you longing to learn more about and from the Bible? Our study of Mark is nearing completion. We'll be soon starting a new Bible study, and we'll share information and an invitation to everyone to join. So watch for that in the coming weeks and make plans to join in. Wednesday evening at seven o'clock on January the 6th, remember our Zoom social hour, and the more the merrier, we would love to have you pop in for just to check in with all of us. And a heads up to members of the staff parish committee to mark your calendars for next Sunday after the coffee hour. We'll be having our uh, staff parish meeting on the third Sunday of the month. This coming week, we're able to revive that birthday hand washing song that was paused last week when we had no birthdays to celebrate. There are four this week, beginning tomorrow on January the 11th for Judy Steinbach. She's celebrating her birthday. Sing out to Judy all day long on Monday. Blow out the candles and praise God for another blessed year, Judy. Happy, happy birthday. Two days later on Wednesday, January the 13th, the candles will be lighting up the day for two of our church ladies, 
sing out loud and strong as we wish Linda Lawrence in Linda's new setting in Orangevale and know that we will be joining in the celebration. Happy, happy birthday, Linda. The next verse of the birthday song on Wednesday should be sung to Susan Spicer. And Susan, may your day be full of fun as you celebrate with family and friends and have a very, very happy birthday. Our birthdays close out this week with Jean Holdren celebrating on Friday, January the 15th. Good, strong voices should be heard over in the Meadows area as Jean enjoys his special day. Happy, happy birthday, Jean. The most wondrous gift on each of these birthdays is each of you. Blessings be on you and let faith guide your heart all year long. Our finance committee is kicking off the 2021 10 by 10 fundraiser this month. Thank you to everyone who contributed last year and participated in this fun activity. You each contributed a one-time $100 gift or pledged $10 a month for 10 months, totaling $100. A cross made of plaques with the names of contributors accents the wall in Adams Hall. You can see it in Winter Wonders this morning. And please join us as we start our uh, drive for 2021. Our contributions go to the church budgets and we have some special cross stickers that will be applied to the plaques of those who participated last year. And anyone new will get their new plaque going as part of that beautiful cross on the wall. Thanks for your participation. Information, more detailed information will be coming in an email this week about how to designate your funds for this special project. Watch the Winter Wonders this morning, and they include that cross, of course. They also include progress on the storage that I showed you last week at church. Pastor Elizabeth and my photos from two different sides of the American River Parkway, and uh, photos from Carol Sankey's walking club that she participates in. I think she may have more miles on her feet than any of us by far. And she found, uh, she went on a walk recently in McKinley Village, an art walk, and there's a couple of pieces there that I'm sharing with you from her Facebook. Also, Tammy sent a picture of a wondrous cross on a stormy day. Enjoy each of these little tidbits. Have a great week, everyone. Winter blessings coming out to each of you. Welcome back to the river. Today we are celebrating the baptism of Jesus, the story of John the Baptist calling the people together to uh, repent of their sins and to be washed afresh and anew. So as we prepare our hearts in worship, I pray that you will center yourself with the joy of baptism in your mind and heart, that you'll maybe keep a little glass of water by your side, and that you will experience the joy of the story that we have to offer today. So welcome to worship.
I'm so glad you're here. Betty, Diane, Mark, it's so great to see you, and it's great to start fresh with a new year. Hey, Andy. I was ready for a fresh start, for sure. I've not been feeling all that well lately. My family's been sick, too. I worry for them every day. We've all had a rough time. Well, I've been doing distance learning with my grandkids. We started up again this week with three of them on technology all day. I need a fresh start for sure. I have an idea about fresh starts. Even Jesus needed one as he started his ministry. Seriously? I mean, Jesus is Jesus, right? Doesn't he have a fresh start whenever he wants? You're probably right, Mark, but there's a great story in the Bible about Jesus going to get baptized in the River Jordan. That sure sounds like a fresh experience. Sounds cold to me. Let me reframe that. I'm going to say, sounds refreshing. <laughs> I'm going to stick with cold. Well, Jesus went to his old friend, John, who was preaching like a wild man out in the river. He was baptizing people as a sign of repentance for their sins. Wait, did Jesus even have any sins? I don't think he did. Oh, we all have sins. Didn't they say that he was fully human and fully divine? I hope he sinned like a normal person. I totally need to know that Jesus understood what it was really like to be human. To be honest, I don't really know if he ever sinned, but he went to be baptized by John in the river. And when it happened, a voice came through the clouds and it said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Wow. Do you think it was God? I mean, wouldn't it be amazing to hear God say something so amazing? It almost makes me cry to think of it. It'd be like saying, Mark, you are my child. You are beloved, and I am proud of you. Or like God saying, hey, Diane, you're my beloved daughter, and I'm proud of you. I think God says it to us a lot. When our friends and family affirm our choices, when we feel that peace in our hearts, when we serve others and experience the joy of hard work on behalf of God's family. Hey, Betty, guess what? You are God's beloved daughter and God is proud of you. Back at you, Andy. You are God's beloved daughter and God is so proud of you. Wow, you guys, this feels like a fresh start to me. 
Amen. Amen. The Baptism of Jesus. Let's meet Jesus, God's one and only Son. Hey he came to earth to save us, each and every one. Let's meet John the Baptist, who loved God so very much. Hey. He lived in the desert, eating bugs and honey for his lunch. One day, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River. Jesus saw what he was doing and walked right over there. John said, Hold on. You should baptize me. I shouldn't be the one. But Jesus replied, Come on, John. This is how it should be done. Eh, okay. When Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened above. John saw the Holy Spirit come down to rest on Jesus as a dove. A voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son. And John the Baptist knew that Jesus was the Chosen One. Hi, this is Julie Steinbach and I'm here for the prayer time. Jesus, Prince of Peace, we ask for your serene guidance in moving our country forward on the path to wellness. Chaos has ruled for too long. We all need to take a collective breath and get back to making decisions based on love and kindness, not selfishness. 2020 was a traumatic year for all of us, and we are looking for ways to vent our anger and disappointment. Motivate us, Lord, to use our angst for good by using that energy to help those that are exhausted, hurting, and struggling. Remind us, Lord, that we are your people, and you will always give us the tools to reflect your love and grace, if we seek it. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. In your name we pray, amen. Now for the weekly prayer concerns. I have a few prayer requests from Jane and Perry. Jane's mom was moved into assisted living, prayers for patience and acceptance. Mike Ball's sister died on New Year's Eve. Mike gave some of our church members a Channel 3 tour. He and his partner, Jim, are struggling. Par prayers for solace. Lord, hear our prayers. 
continue prayers for Betty Kristoff and her extended family on their struggle with the coronavirus. Betty's grandson's wife, Stephanie, lost her grandfather to the virus. Prayers for strength. Lord, hear our prayers. Sarah's parents have been tested for COVID-19 due to a possible exposure. Prayers for negative test results. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for compassion and patience for Mike and Julie Hughes on Julie's journey through early onset dementia. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for relationships that have been permanently damaged or are in danger of breaking during this trying time. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for positivity for all of us, just trying to cope with each day as it comes. Lord, hear our prayers. Loneliness and sadness prevail in many households. May they seek God for comfort. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for endurance for all the frontline workers working tirelessly to get us through this latest COVID surge. May they find rest and hope for the future. Lord, hear our prayers. For Joyce is in the hospital with congestive heart failure. Prayers for stamina. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for Kimberly and David as they await MRI tests for Kimberly to determine the extent of Kimberly's TIA complex migraine. Prayers for discernment. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for my coworker who lost her mom unexpectedly. May she and her family find comfort in God's arms. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for recovery for the following that are battling COVID-19. Maddie, Louise's 12-year-old great-granddaughter, has tested negative for COVID after two positive tests, but is still running a fever. Andy's friend, James Hernandez, is in an induced coma. Kay's friend, Lori Scheffler, is also suffering from the virus. May we keep these and all infected individuals in our prayers as the coronavirus rages on. Lord, hear our prayers. Now for a joy. Ken Crawford's granddaughter-in-law, Stephanie Briggs, is now home and recovering from multiple blood clots. She is feeling better and thanks you for your prayers. Praise the Lord. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stay safe out there, everyone. We're praying for you. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, 
You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Words of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Loving God, I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. I lift this prayer in Jesus' strong and loving name. Amen. Well, here we are at the river. It makes sense, doesn't it, that we should come back to the river for Jesus' baptism? On this day, we celebrate our own baptism as well the covenants that were made by us or for us to follow Jesus and to be fully engaged in the gospel good news. Our text for today comes from the book of Mark. The book of Mark notably is the only one of the gospels that calls itself a gospel. And if you don't remember, the word gospel actually means good news. So Mark is really clearly overtly proclaiming that his message is a message of good news. And early in the book, we meet John the Baptist. John the Baptizer, who is characterized by his crazy clothes, his strange and nature-driven diet, and his zeal for the transformation of the people. John the Baptizer brings out this kind of imagined wild person who is letting everybody know that their lives can be changed if they are just willing to ask for the forgiveness for their sins, to be washed in the river, and to rise up to something new. I think the story is perfect for the beginning of a new year when we're ready for a fresh start and a new focus in our own lives. So here we are, we are at the river, and we are not the only ones at the river because our gospel good news story tells us that all of the people in the countryside of Judea and all of the people in Jerusalem, the big city, are coming to be baptized. For me, that indicates that this is a story not just about Jesus' baptism, but about the revival of a people, a people who are ready to be changed and a people who are ready for a new life. I think most of us can relate to the idea that we are ready for something new to happen in the world. We are ready to be re-energized. We are ready to be deeply engaged in the work of ministry. We are ready to share what we have with others. We are ready to be huggers again and ready to be fully alive in the story that is Jesus' life, right? And so here's an important part of that story because John, in all of his preaching, for the people and bringing them to the river and dunking them in the water and showing them that life anew is possible. He tells them also that one is coming, going ahead of them, and that that one is so powerful and so important that this river baptism of which he preaches and the river baptism that they're experiencing will not nearly be as important as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be upon them when they meet this person. Now this is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He is starting to figure out that his life is bigger than Nazareth, his world is bigger than his family, and his job is more intensive than anything he might imagine or have imagined before. And so he brings himself to the river where all of this revival and baptism is going on. And he offers himself to John. John does not, I think, believe that he should baptize Jesus because he knows that Jesus is the one that we've all been waiting for. But Jesus, I imagine, insisted 
And so in this offering of himself to be baptized, to be washed clean of his previous life and to enter in to a new life, we see an extraordinary event and we get to see it in this story because we are reading about it in the Gospel of Mark. But others don't see it. This telling of this story is specifically and only for Jesus. Jesus sees the heavens torn open and he is anointed by a dove who not just lights on his shoulder or um, appears in the air, but rather takes him over as a gift of the Spirit brought into his body that he can be transformed and ready. This is the place where our earthly experience and our muddy ground and our wet, wet water merge with the holy and the sacred and the mysterious. I love this image. I love the image of the dove descending. I love the image of Jesus being brought to life in that spirit that we will all receive in the coming months and weeks of his work and ministry. And I love that the voice of the Holy comes down and says, this is my son. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. God gives Jesus the affirmation that he needs to go and do what he will do for the rest of his life, to heal the sick, to preach the good news, to liberate the captives, to take care of the poor, to teach and preach in the temple. In this moment of heaven and earth coming together, it all becomes possible for Jesus, but also for every person who experiences baptism. Because let me tell you, our commitment to Christ and our call to ministry as a people of faith, all of us are called to ministry, by the way, starts at our baptism. It starts at the moment in which we say yes, or someone says yes for us, to God's Spirit in our lives, that we might be raised in the church, that we might come to understand what it means to follow Jesus, that we might offer ourselves, as we say in the communion liturgy, as a holy and living sacrifice, that we might serve and love and engage in so much goodness. So this special moment when Jesus experiences that Holy Spirit lighting him up from the inside out, lighting on him from the outside in, is a moment that we get to claim as well. Because Jesus has handed us this story, this affirmation, and this moment in time that we might offer ourselves as a gift to the revival experience, as an opportunity to preach and teach and proclaim the good news with our actions, with our words, with our whole lives. So this day, I pray that you will experience a little bit of revival as well. That if you brought a glass of water with you into this worship space and time, whether it's in front of your TV or in your computer room or wherever you are, that you will touch your forehead with that water and remind yourself of your baptism and be thankful for your call to ministry and the ways that the Holy Spirit is calling us all to follow Jesus with everything we are and all that we can. Amen. Most of the service and the sermon that you just heard were recorded before the events of Wednesday. And I thought about making 
a huge, strong statement against the actions of those at the Capitol. And I think I don't need to, because we all know that what happened was wrong. I do want to say, as we prepare ourselves to renew our baptismal covenant, that as United Methodists, when we commit to raising our children in the church and being raised up in the church ourselves, we commit to um, a series of questions. And so I want to share those questions with us as we remember our baptismal covenant. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. These are the foundational questions that we say yes to when we baptize our children, when we join the church, when we come as adults to be baptized as well. So as a people of faith, I remind you that these are our commitments as we see that there is evil in the world, as we recognize that there is injustice and oppression, and as we work to make our world a better place. These are the covenants of our baptism. As much as we profess Christ, we also commit to making our community, our nation, our world a better place. And so if you have a glass of water right now, like I do, I'm going to say to you, remember your baptism and be thankful. And I'm going to just invite you to put a little water on your own forehead, just like I just did. And I'm going to flick a little water at the camera. I don't know if you could see that. But remember your baptism and be thankful. I can't wait until I can put that water on your forehead and touch your face and tell you how much God loves you, that you are God's beloved child, and that together we are committed to Christ to serving God, and to moving our world into a better, healthier, and more joyful place. So remember your baptism and be thankful. I come with joy to meet my Lord for me. Thus with joy we meet our Lord, His presence always near. Yet in such friendship better know, we see and praise Him here. We see and praise Him here. Together met, together bound, we'll go our separate ways. And as His people in the world, we'll live and speak His praise. We'll live and speak His praise. Go in peace. As you leave this service of worship, I pray that you know how much God loves you, that the approval that Jesus experienced by the voice of God belongs to every one of us who profess his name. So go in peace. May you know the love of God. May you experience Jesus, your friend and your savior. And may the Holy Spirit guide you and guard you and sustain you and inspire you to something new in the coming week. Amen. Okay. Nuts, 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 nuts. Where did I start?
Amen. Amen. I always say amen. Amen. All right. And that's how it's done, everyone. You're supposed to say that's a wrap. <laughs> and that's <laughs> a wrap. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>